right there. Ooh, cool. So the way this works is, you know, I throw my eyeballs way out against the wall, right? And they splat somewhere. And uh, that is where my horizon line is, right? So it's this imaginary tool. And then in your 2D design way, you have to pick where your horizon line is on the paper, right? Mm -hmm. So if I want to show off the ceiling, because the ceiling's really interesting, I bring my horizon down, right, on the page. So I do it here. If I want a 50-50 ceiling floor, I put it 50-50 right in the middle of the page. If I want to focus on the floor and not much of the ceiling, I put it high up, right? So I like the ceiling here, so I just very lightly establish a horizon line. And now I have to decide where my vanishing point is, right? So how much of where do I want my window to be in the world? Okay, so I kind of figure that everything that's to the right of my point of view is pretty interesting because that's where the, the hallway is, right? So I'm going to put my, and my uh, line is like just hitting the edge of that door, right? So I'm going to put it right there. I, what I usually like to do is like do a small cross instead of a point. So I find that I can come back to that more easily. So the trick to this is, is going to be staying loose. And you can either think of it as skip around in terms of doing stuff that's in front and really far, or you can think of it in terms of um, go from stuff that's way far and then draw everything back towards you, or start towards you and draw everything backwards. Does that make sense? Like in, in terms of how close things are. Um, generally what I like to do is take the largest area, um, the largest volume, and establish that real quick. Um, and what makes linear perspective interesting is just staying loose. So I'm going to start with this big old door line. And I have no idea how it's going to, how big it needs to be really, but pretty big probably. Um, and then it's kind of got this funky proportion to it. Might even go off the page. So then once I'm there, I know that I want to establish this hall, this hallway in here. Um, and if I measure from my point of view up to the top of that door, I know that I have like maybe four lengths from the top, from my point of view to the top of that door, to the out, outside door, and then up to the top. So I kind of divide this into quarters, and I know the door is going to be about there, right? So then once I'm there, the door, the right side looks about maybe a little over halfway. So I've knocked in that whole back area. So now that I have a square, I do the same thing that we did on the board, right? I take those points and connect them back to the vanishing point and out. And here we're inside the box, right? And then they're going off somewhere here. So I can't really see the rest of the doors, but I assume that they're there. That makes sense so far? So we're inside, so the hallway is inside the box. And then I have this kind of funky thing where the, the hallway progresses a little further. So what I do is just make sure to avoid divergent lines and then connect them back. And then I just kind of very lightly make sure that I go all the way back to the vanishing point again. Right? So here I'm establishing that right wall. And then I know within the right wall that about halfway there's uh, the break from the windows to the wall surface. Do you guys see that in there? So the way you find halfway points is you draw an X, right? So if you have a, a a square, you draw an X through the square, that'll be the center, the exact center of the square, right? Mm -hmm. And if you measure the diagonals and they're the same, it's actually square, all the, the, they're 90 degree angles. It's kind of cool. I d use that in construction all the time. So I just kind of do a little X and then I have found my vertical for the subdivision. Right. So I know that's where the, the windows are. And then it, ha it so happens that this window is very close to that line, that first bit of the window. And there's one just slightly above, one slightly below, and that's really it. And then I have the floor. And then I have, I can sort of roughly 
estimate the verticals in there. And what I like about not using a ruler is that it kind of like makes everything a little wonky. And it shows off your personality a little more. But if you use a ruler, it just kind of kills it, you know, makes it sort of a drafting exercise. Um, so there I have the window, right? And then within the window, there's the, the door. So I can establish the door just by drawing squares within squares within squares and rectangles, right? The frame has a little thickness. And then the door is subdivided in half. And that subdivision actually winds up going all the way to the top there. And that goes all the way to the top. And that crosses. And then there's another subdivision there. And then two more here at roughly the same height here. If we were to take that back, it would hit. And then there's the bars on the doors themselves meeting that, etc. And then when I get to the ceiling, then I have um, a major line going down the ceiling tile rails there. And I have uh, another one which actually comes from the, the corner of the door over. And then I can kind of see one more which come which goes off the page. And then there, it creates this weird little, so one, two, three, uh, I actually need, I kind of messed up this height, but that's okay. So what I do is I fudge this art, right? I want to do, so there are one, two, three, four, and, a cha and four in change rows. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and then change. Not a big deal, right? So then what I do is I kind of like, more or less, I arbitrarily pick a vertical or a horizontal to start this, the grid. And then I just make sure that the grid spaces are really small as I go back, and that they get larger apart as I go, as I come towards me, right? There's a mathematical way to determine that, but just go by instinct for now, right? So now I put the, this is the, the back window door kind of area. And this is darker than I would normally get, but I want to do this to emphasize. This is the edge of the wall, this is the bottom of the wall, this is the top of the wall, and then this is the door through which I'm looking. So I've kind of created this window to the world feel, right? And then what I want to do just to kind of like make things more interesting is I would want to fill in the rest. Like I have the door itself now, you know, to work with. Which if I, if I shorten the door a little bit, I can kind of get a little bit of it in there. You know what I mean? So I can start that door, create, creating like a little interest for the door. Now it does not share the same vanishing point because the door is not parallel to those walls. So it has a different vanishing point on the horizon line somewhere else. So if things aren't parallel in reality, they need to have different vanishing points. And if, it, if you're looking at a ramp, then it has a new horizon line. Interesting, huh? Cool. So, you guys ready to do this? Give it a shot? Yep. All right, give it a shot. We're so go in, uh, probably the hallway is good. So you can go sit out in the hall, take a chair, or one of these little stools. Take a chair. Or just sit up <laughs> against the wall, or sit in one of the chairs back right there. And it's like imagine inside.